Congressman, we have a young congressman in Ohio, um, Tim Ryan, who is in the process of supporting the building of a coal liquefaction plant in his district to create um, a numerous amount of jobs. Can you tell us what you know about that and how many jobs you expect to be created there? Uh, I don't know the number of jobs, Tony, but I do know of the effort that Tim is making. Uh, Charlie Wilson is doing the same in his district. And by the way, I want to extend best wishes from Dennis Kucinich and Stephanie Tubb Jones, who knew I was coming here and, and wanted me to say hello to everybody. Uh, but, you know, that is uh, a foot in the door. It shows it can be done. Uh, and it will be done in an environmentally sound manner because the coal industry is, uh, I tell you, there's one thing they've done lately, and this is after years of pleading with them, that they recognize that global warming is a problem and no longer hide their heads under the rug and try to claim it's not a, a problem. So the industry uh, recognizes now it's a problem and that they uh, must be at the table because if they keep ignoring it, they're going to be on the menu instead of at the table. And uh, they're doing that. They're coming forward with proposals that do provide for the clean burning of coal that will ultimately, once the technology is online, such as carbon capture and sequestration, uh, provide for a cleaner uh, fuel than the conventional uh, emissions from our tailpipes. Uh, but this plant to, to which you refer is, is, show, is going to show, I hope, that it can be done. It's a foot in the door th that I hope will convince investors, Wall Street, the private sector, to invest in many more of these across the country. Uh, Congressman, um, this Brazil is loaded with cheap and 60% of their cars are running out. The strip mining in West sorry, Virginia has ruined the land and, and the miners are all out of work. Now why don't we import some of the cane from Brazil? Oh, Brazil. Yes, it's cheap. Sugar cane. I mean, yeah. 60% of their cars are running out. Are running on sugar cane? Yes. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. right. <laughs> well then, uh, we ought to be important from uh, Brazil. That's the case. Congressman, nobody has repealed the law of supply and demand. Everything we're hearing about the oil crisis is based on providing more fuel for us to burn. How about looking at the demand side? Is there any realistic pro prospect of any major action in the Congress such as a further reduction, uh, increase in CAFE standards to reduce demand. On the other side of the question, uh, France produces 78% of its energy, electrical energy, from nuclear. Uh, is it likely, in your opinion, that we will be able to re replace or at least not expand our existing coal-fired power plants with a non-carbon burning source? Well, uh, again, we, we need to develop all those sources. Uh, I recognize supply and demand, and uh, with that being the case as it is worldwide with what's happening in China and India, the demand is there. Uh, the OPEC countries will say, uh, you know, we're, we want stable prices. High prices don't help us any. Uh, we have to have uh, stability and, a, and a, as low a price as we can. Uh, we are producing the most we can now, except for Saudi Arabia, they will say. Uh, and we don't have the infrastructure to increase our production, so therefore, why are you beating up on us? Uh, Saudis probably could produce a little more than what they are now. And the, I think they gave Bush peanuts when he was over there, but uh, that's, that's fine. Uh, but uh, what we need to do, and you mentioned nuclear. I, I'm not opposed to nuclear, except when I find them being opposed to the coal industry, which in a hidden way, oftentimes they are, just like the natural gas industry. Uh, I caught them funding full-page ads in the Washington Post, New York Times, about a year, year and a half ago, of this little child with a dirty face with the headline, Coal is Filthy, paid for by National Environmental or something or other. It wasn't an environmental group at all. It was a natural gas industry. <laughs> Give me a break. So the, that's why... <laughs> Uh, well, we don't need tactics like that. And they came, admitted it and came to me and apologized. And, uh, and I said, it's fine to promote natural gas. fine to promote nuclear. But don't go attack coal at the same time and make it look like it's somebody else attacking the coal industry. Uh, so uh, I'm, I'm not for 
uh, not developing nuclear. Uh, it does have its safety problems, as we know, but those, I'm sure, are being addressed and certainly a lot better than uh, they were in years past. But I think also, you know, with supply and demand, when we look at the fact, and we've done a study in our Committee on Natural Resources of uh, the rapid increase in the amounts of federal lands, onshore and offshore, that are uh, grant, being granted leases, something like a 361% increase since 2000, uh, mostly under Republican control. We've granted them these leases. They've been approved environmentally. Uh, they're all ready to be open for production. And of the some 42 million acres available to the industry on federal onshore and offshore lands, they've only developed uh, something like 7 million out of 42 million acres. Why aren't they opening up and drilling on these lands? They're stockpiling leases. For what? Waiting for the price to get even higher? So here's what's already environmentally approved and open to them, and yet they claim they need new areas like Anwar to go and open up for drilling. And uh, you know, the time they during this time that they've been granted more and more leases, the price of gas has gone up at the same time. There's no correlation. You can't drill your way to lower gas prices. There seems to be uh, all sorts of interesting uh, proposals to uh, deal with the energy problem. <laughs> And uh, I'm wondering whether the Congress um, should consider maybe creating a select committee to come up with a more comprehensive program, including <coughs> subsidies. Um, <coughs> and um, uh, maybe this will, uh, and maybe this will have to await the new president. But um, it seems to me that uh, we need some sort of overall national program. What do you think? Well, first, uh, there's a lot of things we're going to have to wait a new president. But uh, <laughs> uh, the speaker, Speaker Pelosi, uh, upon assuming the speakership uh, a year and a half ago, did create a new uh, global uh, global climate warming committee. I, I forgot the formal name of it, uh, and its goal was to provide this overall bring. Uh, bring everybody together, have hearings in Washington and around the world on the global climate issue, uh, and then make recommendations, although no legislative authority, but to make recommendations to the Congress on, on what should be done. It's, it's still doing its work. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be hard. I'm telling you, it, it's hard to, to develop what's really good for the country when you have these competing interests that won't get their act together and work in total and work together. Uh, and, and you have members of Congress that represent each of these interests. So uh, uh, I, I hope this committee uh, can can bring us together on a, on a, a plan. We, we nibbled at it last year and passed in uh, one of the first six pieces of the new Congress, uh, uh, H.R. 6, that sought to recapture some of the subsidies the previous Congresses had given the oil industry and uh, royalty holidays they had provided the industry and uh, none of which brought down the price of gas or opened up increased uh, production as the industry claimed they would do when they got them but haven't done but instead have, have enjoyed the financial benefits from the Congress. Uh, so we've sought to recapture, we're still seeking to recapture a lot of, of that income uh, that will go into the development of uh, uh, renewable fuels, alternative fuels, uh, and provide money for a lot of what I've talked about here today. That's why I say we have to pay for it, find the money for a lot of what we want to do. Uh, and there's still money left from that that would, should go toward uh, addressing a true global climate bill that the Speaker still wants to bring up, but I'm not sure it's going to come up this year. You have the complexity of cap and trade. Uh, you know, the industries that would get, the nuclear industry, for example, would be for that because that would help them, but other industries would be hurt. Uh, you'd have the issue of stocking up on the options and then selling them for your bottom line profit rather than reducing greenhouse gas emissions, all types of problems in that. Uh, uh, we did experiment with that with the Clean Air Act of 1982, and that's what we're looking at modeling a, a new bill after, but but there are problems that need to be repaired. So maybe one of these days we'll get to it <laughs> and really get something passed that's meaningful. <laughs>